This is part one of scraping the web with Ruby. Just before we get started, I wanted to tell you about techmaker.tv, which is my site where you can uh, get access to some free courses that I'm working on. I've got a lot of new stuff coming out and I'd be really excited for you to go sign up. Also, another great way to stay up to date is just subscribe to this channel and you'll be getting a lot of new content coming your way. All right, let's get started. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to use Ruby to go out to the web and pull back data from websites that you're interested in. The challenge, as you will see, is that data around the web in the form of HTML pages is not that friendly to work with normally. So we're gonna use some cool tools to make it a lot easier on ourselves. Let's jump over to the terminal and get started. So uh, open up your terminal, which yours is gonna look a little bit different. I've customized all the colors and stuff on mine. Um, and if you have Ruby installed, which you can check by running ruby-v and it'll tell you what version you have. Uh, you should be able to follow along with this pretty well. You'll probably need Ruby 2.0 or greater. Um, if you can get something more recent, that's good too. Um, once you have Ruby installed, you can get started with this just by running IRB in the terminal like that. Hit enter and it's gonna open up an interactive Ruby prompt. So we're gonna use two tools uh, to do this today. So the first thing we're gonna do is require open URI, which is part of the standard library in Ruby. So you should have that automatically. So if we go Ruby open URI in the search, you can check out the documentation for it here in case you're confused by anything that we do. Um, we're also going to use another tool called NoCoGiri, which I don't believe is standard and you may need to run gem installed NoCoGiri if you don't have it. I've already installed it so I can just do require NoCoGiri. And just to be clear, actually this could be confusing if you're new to this so let me just quit. To install a gem in your terminal without being inside of IRB you would run gem install NoCoGiri. But like I said, I already have it so I'm not going to do that. Um, so I'm going to run IRB again require open URI, require Nokogiri, and if you have them, uh, it'll print out true for each one. So, open URI is a tool for interacting with the web. That's um, the simplest way to say it. There's other tools that you can use. One's called HTTP Party, or HTT Party. Uh, it's hard to say, whatever the case. Um, and there's another one called Faraday. Um, neither one of those, I believe, are standard, so you would have to install the gems, which, you know, there's probably pros and cons, but for what we're doing, it doesn't matter. We'll just use OpenURI. Uh, NoCoGiri is a tool that we can use to process HTML and turn it into something that we can actually work with. So let's see what we were talking about. Um, so I had a web page open, which was uh, New York Craigslist. So I'm going to click on Computer Gigs, and I'm going to search for Ruby. You can search for whatever you want. Um, and you can see here that we have obviously some HTML output in our browser. Um, so what I'm going to do in here is I'm just going to type open. You need a little quote and hit enter. And I paste in the link and then hit enter. And that's going to give you this temp file. So what I'm going to do is say document equals underscore, which underscore is a trick to just set a variable equal to the last thing that was returned. Uh, you can see that by seeing this uh, little arrow here. So that sets document equal to our temp file. Then I'm going to say content equals document.read. And we get out this huge blob of HTML, which um, you're going to have to just believe me because I'm not going to read through all of it, but that's the HTML from this Craigslist page. That's really simple. Going out and getting a web page is just really easy. So um, let's go back over to the browser and we're going to inspect this page and I'm going to show you how we can start working with NoCoGiri. So uh, what we're going to be interested in are these titles um, for the moment. So let's inspect one of those and let's take a look at just kind of what's going on. So we have a form. We have this div content, we have div class rows, class row, and then inside of that we have all the kind of data about the thing. Okay, so and we have a class hdrlnk. So let's go back and let's just play with this a little bit. So if we go back to the browser, 
or not the browser, the, the terminal, we can run, uh, so we have this stored in content. Um, and what we need to do is say uh, parsed, you can name this variable whatever you want. I'm going to call it parsed content. And then we're going to say nokogiri HTML, if I can type. And we're just going to pass in content. And that's going to give us back an equally large blob, if not bigger blob of stuff. And you can see in here, if we just pick something at random, that we have nokogiri XML element, name, span, attributes, so on and so forth. So what it's done is it's basically processed every single node in the DOM structure. And it's given us back a nokogiri wrapper around it so that we can talk to it like a Ruby object, because it is a Ruby object. So um, if we call parsed content, that's where our stuff is stored. We get the thing back. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, you can go read on the nokogiri site um, about all the crazy things it can do. But for now, I'm going to call .css and then pass it a string with dot content. And if it finds something, it's going to give us back a section of this big blob. And again, it's going to be difficult to kind of prove because it's so much content. But if I hit enter, it's always going to it's going to give me back a a bunch of stuff. If I were to misspell content, um, it's going to give me back nothing because that doesn't exist in that big blob. So in a nutshell, um, what we're doing is passing a CSS selector um, and Nokogiri goes through and finds that CSS selector, or that class rather, within the, the HTML structure it has and it will return the subset based on uh, if it finds a CSS selector. So uh, the cool thing is, is it ac actually can nest. So this CSS content gives us a Nokogiri HTML structure and I can actually look again for one inside of it. So I could say .css .row because we saw that there was back over here in the browser we have content and then inside of that we should have a row. So let's see what happens. And don't forget the dot. I forgot the dot earlier when I was playing with this and it kind of confused me for a minute. Um, so you need the dot and it's going to give you back some more stuff. It's still a ton. So let's get down. Let's keep drilling down until we get to something we can really verify is what we're looking for. So we really want to get down all the way to this HDR LNK. Um, so we're going to say dot CSS dot H HDR LNK. And that's going to give us every single instance of one of these HDR LNKs that's inside a row that's inside the content. So let's take a look at the first one. So the first one uh, is a little easier to process. It's a lot less information. So we have that it's an A tag. Um, it's an XML element, name A. So it's telling us it's an A tag. Um, it has the attributes here. So we can see that it's got an href attribute with a value. So we know that it has a link if we were to go to newyork.craigslist.org slash this stuff, that would presumably be this actual page. Um, and, and then we have the title here. So an interesting thing is to call uh, dot .class and see what we're dealing with. So it should tell us it's a XML element. And then on here, we can call dot .instance methods and just get a look at what methods this XML element has. And I'm going to sort them so that we can keep it a little bit sane. And you can see that there's a lot of stuff that we can call on this thing. So I'm interested in this inner HTML, inner text. Um, so let's go back all the way to where we have first so that we can call uh, methods on an object or methods on this object. So if I say inner text, it's going to give me the title. If I say uh, inner HTML, it's probably going to give me the title because it's kind of like the bottom of an HTML tree. Um, so yeah, so let's actually try this. I assume, this is a guess, I assume that this row is also an XML element, so let me call that class on it. No, it is not, but let's see what um, methods it has. Let me sort them again. 
So we also have this inner HTML method. So if I call dot row first. Oh wait, I think I needed to call dot first to get the class. Okay, yeah, so that's why that wasn't the same. Sorry, I'm just kind of exploring here to kind of get a feel for this, and maybe it's helpful to you to see how you might go about this. So if I do inner HTML here, I'm going to get back the HTML that's inside this row. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, let's keep going. So let's go back to where we were a minute ago where we were looking at how to get the uh, title here. So if you hit up arrow, you can cycle back through your previous commands. So now I've got the title. Um, let's actually take a look at this um, in the browser again. Uh, so, so we know how to get this title. Curious about how we would get the, the time here. So let's try uh, something. So if I just call that CSS and then pass in time without a dot, what happens? Interesting. So I get the... Okay, so let's call first on that again and see what we have. So is this the same thing? So we have uh, date time, value 2016, 9, 4, 15, 32. And are we looking at the first one here? No. Okay, so we want to look at the first one and verify this is the same. Let me actually just inspect this. That'll be easier. Okay, cool. So that's actually pulling back the time element. So I apparently, um, you can, instead of, if you don't pass in a dot, if I pass in dot time, it's probably not going to find anything. If you don't, you can just pass in the name of the HTML element and it will find it for you. So after an exploratory session like this, what I normally would do is go back and kind of read the documentation again. I, I tend to kind of go back and forth between like playing with tools and then reading the documentation to kind of figure out how it works and get a, get a sense about it. Um, but based on what we know, I think we can do something kind of useful. So. Just by calling dot row, we're getting back an array of all of the rows. So I'm going to do dot each do row, and I'm going to print out so puts, um, and then we'll do a string interpolation, and I'm going to do uh, let's see if I can do this row dot css. And we want the, what was it, dot hdrlnk. And then we'll call dot inner text. So I think we might actually need to call it. So what we're assuming here is that inside of each row, there's only one hdrlnk. Um, so we'll just take the first one. All right, so let's stop here and see what happens. So for each one, we've printed out the title now. That worked. OK, so we're going to do the same thing again. And now, instead of ending it here, I'm going to say at, um, well, you know what we didn't do? We didn't call any methods on the, we didn't call any methods on the time thing. So let me cycle back up here to that. And we're going to say dot uh, value and see what that does. No, there's no method. So we need to do dot uh, methods dot sort. And let's see what we can find in here. So we do have inner HTML. So we could call inner HTML and see what that gives us. September 4th, that's really not as much data as I would like to get, and I can see that there's more data, so I want to figure out how to get that. There's a method called attributes, so let's see what that does. Alright, so that gives us a date time, and that is, okay, so this is a hash. 
which is a Noko Gary thing. Can I call value on this? Yep. So I need to call the attributes, ask for the daytime, and then call dot value on that. That's interesting. Okay. So let's just see if we can do this in our loop that we were doing earlier. So we're going to cycle through the loop, or cycle through the, through there, and then we're going to say, do another string interpolation. So we're going to say row.css time without a dot, dot attributes, and then it's date time dot value. That's kind of a mouthful. And undefined method attributes. Okay, I needed a call first. I felt like I was forgetting something. First. Okay, so now we're printing out Ruby Remote Developer needed at 2016 Okay, so that's pretty cool. So basically what we've done is we've pulled in an HTML document. We've pulled out the title and the time posted. Um, so in the next episode, what I'm going to do is start actually writing a program where we pull all these uh, interesting data points out and we initialize, um, I guess, gig objects of some kind um, with all the data that we're interested in. And then in, in future episodes, what I would think would be really cool would be able to get a list of cities a person's interested in get a list of search terms they're interested in and go out and scrape Craigslist everywhere um, in all the cities that they're interested in and build up a list of gigs that might be kind of interesting maybe we'll put that in a Rails app or something like that so um, if you're interested in this um, next time it'll be a little bit more visual hopefully because we'll be writing some code uh, in a program and just you know doing a little less playing around in the terminal um, but if you're interested in this kind of stuff, uh, go ahead and hit subscribe and we'll uh, have another episode coming out in the next few days. Talk to you then.